I have made a lot of videos titled, This Situation is Insane. What this YouTuber did is actually insane or huge YouTube drama or something like that. Well, usually I talk about a topic that's just really kind of blown out of proportion and no one really cares and everyone will forget in about five to 10 hours. But what I can safely say is that this situation might actually be insane to the point that one of my biggest competitors, Dolan Dark Slop Live, actually did an entire video talking about it. Welcome back to Slop Live. Today's Sloppic may just be the first situation that's actually insane. Now this absolutely insane drama situation revolves around the YouTuber Rusty Cage. Now this is a YouTuber that I've watched a lot of his videos. I genuinely enjoy some of the content that he makes. What he uploads is different to say the least. I genuinely could not put this in a single category, but the guy follows me on Twitter. So I'm gonna say nice things about him. Now Rusty Cage, like a lot of other YouTubers found his fame many, many years ago doing these kind of like music videos, not exactly Coco Melon or Baby Shark family friendly. I mean, one of the videos here is him doing the family-friendly new song. And then his other most viewed video is the knife game song. So just to give an idea, the kind of content that he makes, but Rusty has always been making different content. I think one of the main reasons why it's so hard to categorize his content is because he always makes something that is very unique or strange. I remember seeing in my recommended about three years ago now, a video where he talks about going sober, quitting alcohol for around 30 days, because usually what he would do, self-admitted, he would drink about half a fifth of whiskey every single night. And obviously that is a lot of alcohol. That is World of T-shirts, Joshua Block levels of alcohol that I actually talked about a couple of videos ago. No one should be drinking that amount regularly. And he did an entire hour long video doing a deep dive into how he's going to quit, the relapses, the voices in his head. It was a really interesting watch and he even admitted halfway through the video that he did relapse. He did end up drinking again. But obviously he got back on the saddle and then he went sober for the rest of the 30 days, only for the video to then end where it began with him being hung over again. I'm hung over. I think one of the reasons why I found it interesting is because you see so many videos of people like, you know, oh, I stopped smoking for 30 days, I stopped drinking for 30 days. And it's it, it's like, it's so crafted to be like, you know, artificially like gleeful and hopeful that it comes across as very insincere. It's like when you pull up those motivational talks on TikTok of someone basically just saying like, you got this, you're amazing, you're incredible. You know, it's got like the really happy music in the background. There's It's probably all filmed in like a black and white filter as well. And then you think, oh my God, I'm... I'm actually really inspired. This is crazy. And then you keep scrolling on TikTok and two minutes later, you totally forgot that you even consumed that video. That was just me kind of rambling on that I genuinely enjoy his content. I think he's a very good content creator. And honestly, he's very underrated. I know everyone is going to say that about like someone that they watch or one of their mates. Oh, like, bro, he's underrated. But genuinely, like some of the effort he puts into his videos, it is so incredible. But the problem is what he makes is so anti-YouTube. The algorithm will basically never push it unless it's a funny meme video about tying nooses. It's practical. So you may have noticed that a lot of videos on Rusty Cage's channel have been about building a guillotine. And also keep in mind, if you look at his upload schedule, apart from the upload a couple of days ago, he actually has not uploaded a single video in around eight months. Now, Rusty Cage actually did a live stream last night at the time of recording where he was meant to set this guillotine off that he made for around eight months. And it's him sat there for about an hour. Nothing really much happens. You know, he's checking his phone. There's not really much happening in the video. But obviously before that, like I said, he was making this guillotine from scratch and he basically went into like the history of guillotines how it was used in like the french revolution and stuff and you can tell from his commentary it is very uh very different, very unique. Again, I really do just like how so much of his content is just anti-YouTube. And then it ended with a final video that included a lot of narration. And then he went live on his channel for, I think, only the, the, the second time in his entire career. And this was him setting up the guillotine. And basically, it was implied that he cut his own head off. So he basically moves the camera away. It moves it off. You hear a slicing sound. And then you hear a lot of liquid coming out. And it's basically, you know, implied that he game ended. That that That's the nice, friendly YouTube term, so I don't get demonetized. Now, do you ever see a head roll off? No. Do you see any blood? No. You hear a gushing sound. Now, the stream itself was an hour and 28 minutes long. So it's mostly just him sat around just talking about life. What's interesting as well, about four minutes into the stream, he reads some of the chats that people are sending. And then he says at one point, like, I don't know what you were going to think about this stream, but it's definitely not that. Now, I was reading some of the chats before I started this stream. <laughs> Let's see what y'all were saying. I don't know what y'all think I'm going to be doing on this stream, but it's definitely not going to be that. 
though there certainly has been a lot of speculation now throughout the stream he does genuinely look very tired very anxious and even listens to some music occasionally with chat around 10 minutes into the stream i think he plays a song from his second guillotine episode which is called sweet lemonade <laughs> And then around 12 minutes into the stream, he's pouring himself a shot of whiskey. Again, that just instantly made me call back to the time when he was doing that sober run a couple of years ago. And then interestingly, just short of 13 minutes into the stream, he actually pulls out a watermelon saying, we're going to be cutting this later. It depends how long I want to stream for. I got this watermelon that I'll be cutting later. Depends on how long I stream for. And then around 18 minutes, he listens to a song that he wrote himself called the Guillotine Song. I can't play it because obviously I'll be sniped by YouTube copyright. But when I saw that he was playing Guillotine, I was hoping it was by Death Grips. Unfortunately, it wasn't. It was the next best thing. And then around 22 minutes into the stream, we have a cat cameo. Again, is it important to the video? Nope. I just wanted to point out there is a cat cameo in this YouTuber's final video. Anyone who was a doctor, uh, they were <laughs> literate. <laughs> Or... And then around 25 minutes into the stream, he talks about some behind the scenes video with the whole, you know, guillotine series that he made. I probably shouldn't say what it's all for real and what's for show, but one thing with this last video was I didn't, I, I kind of had a plan of what it was going to be about. It was going to be completely different. It was going to be an entirely different premise and I was going to end it entirely differently, but... One thing I love as well, even though this is apparently his final video before he moves on into the afterlife, he still remembers that he has to shill merch. He has to make some kind of money before, you know, basically moving on. Well, I was going <sighs> to... I forgot to bring my merchandise up here. I was going to push some merch because I, I bought way too much of these patches and stickers and pins. Jumping quite ahead around 45 minutes into the stream, he plays The Sorceress Apprentice by P. Dukas. I think the song is around like 10 minutes long, but again, can't play it because of copyright. And then around 56 minutes into the stream, the big thing happens. He starts to set up the guillotine. And then, like I said earlier, around an hour into the VOD, he says, all right, I guess we're going to chop up this watermelon. And then he moves the camera away. You hear a slice sound. Something comes off and just a bunch of liquid gushing. The final words you can hear him say before the guillotine drops is thanks for watching. Now, you hear nothing in the background. There's no footsteps. You don't hear him quietly sneak away. You can hear his phone go off quite a lot. A lot of people obviously worried for his safety, trying to call him, trying to text him. And the stream is just completely static for the next half an hour. And then the stream ends. Now, looking on his Twitter, there's a pretty cryptic tweet that came out and it actually said, my next video will probably be my last, at least how I understand thing. I put a lot of work into it and I think it will make people happy or sad. I'm not really sure anymore. It will all make sense by and by. And then there was another tweet he made right before the stream where he said, give me liberty, which again, I hate to admit, I, I just thought of Helldivers too. Now, the comment section was a mix between people thinking this was actually genuine or people realizing it was a bit and, you know, like feeding into it. Like, for example, there's one guy here saying, if you're killing yourself, <laughs> give me my $5 super chat back. And then you had other people basically asking, like, you know, it has to be fake. And the best thing about this video is it got posted to Reddit. And as we know, Reddit is full of a lot of people that think they're smarter than they actually are. So there's a very detailed post on the r slash YouTube subreddit saying, did Rusty Cage just guillotine himself live? You also had very close friends with Rusty Cage saying, I've been getting a lot of messages about Rusty. I tried calling him three times. He won't answer. His stream is still going, but nobody is there. I don't know what's going on either. Now, there were people that genuinely thought this was real and it wasn't a bit. And those people, for his safety, quote unquote, decided to publicly dox him on Twitter so his home address would get leaked so the authorities could come around to his house to make sure he was okay. Obviously, I'm not going to be showing that on screen, but it's out there. Quick update on that, by the way. The address was actually quickly deleted after they found out that Rusty Cage is actually okay. And he basically said that this is an elaborate hoax. It's a bit. And don't waste emergency services time by calling them. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because because it is a very elaborate bit. I'm not going to sit here and say, that's so irresponsible. I can't believe you did that. That's so bad. Like, believe me, I've seen examples of people be complete morons on purpose and basically bait. A good example are two YouTubers that I really like, Ramel and Jay. They used to have this channel called TGF. I think they're on a bit of a hiatus working on their own stuff at the minute. But in one of their videos, Jay basically got a microwave on his head and put a bunch of cement around it to the point that he basically had to have emergency services called. And also we got interviewed by the media and he basically said, like, I don't care. I got the attention I wanted and I'd happily do it again. Are you okay? But the prank went badly wrong. I feel amazing. <laughs> you, you're laughing, but you could have lost your life here. Yeah, 
Probably. Obviously, Rusty Cage never actually put his life in danger. Yes, people thought he might have died. But again, like, really? Just take one look at the guy's channel and this is exactly the kind of content he makes. This kind of, like, deep cynical pessimistic and i don't even mean this in a negative way it sounds pretty negative but like if, if i want like a brain rot detox of all this kind of like you know like in your face tiktok stuff he does great content for that now he did say beforehand that this will be his last video i'm not actually sure whether that means he's retiring from youtube or doing something else entirely or this might just be the last video of that series uh you know the whole guillotine series but again i i really do recommend check out his content i know it's a very weird uh way to introduce him by apparently having his head chopped off on a guillotine but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, check him out.